Hello and welcome to Infinity. Let's add some fog to this picture, but uh, I'm going to do it in a way that takes account of the 3D elements of it, that it goes away. You'll see in a moment what I mean. So, easy way to start off, take the rectangle tool, and we're going to draw a picture on top, like that. Then we take the gradient tool, and we draw from top to bottom. And the bottom here is going to be black because we're going to use this with the screen because we're going to use this normal here. It says normal go down to screen. These were lightened ones here. Black is effectively invisible. So when I hit screen there, I've now got fog coming down to the bottom. I can use this halfway marker here to control the amount of fog. But the dilemma is. Whatever you do, actually for the end of the street there, I'd like to see more fog because it's further away. But when I'm doing that, things closer here should be visible. So what I have to do is put in a bit of a mask to, to uh, cope with that. So let's turn this off at the moment. Because it's a rectangle, it's a shape, we can always rechange this. Let's go to somewhere like that to get rid of that gradient line. Now we'll go to the bottom here and we're going to do a selection here first of all. So I'll go to the selection brush and I just want particularly to get the... What am I doing here? Right, no I don't want that, excuse me, Control D. Let's start from again. That's the selection brush isn't it? Yes. There we go, that's going better now. And I'm going to select the edge of these here. Um, when you're doing this, you might want to use the... There are fine to tidy up the edges of things. I'm just going to show the principle here, but it's actually not too important. An alt click to get rid of those, bring back a bit of this here. What you can do is, is if I hit Q, I can see here where this is selected or not. And if I want to do a quick bit of tidying up, I use a paintbrush, which is black and white, and one will bring it back. I needed a 100% opacity here, so I type zero to bring that right up. Yeah, so this is for that side. Hardness, about the middle to give it a little bit of softness. You don't want to get too hard with these things. Then X to switch brushes. Watch this. X, ping, there you go. And then I can sort of tidy up here. So you can go around and do a little bit of a little bit of tidying up here. I won't overdo it, but the idea is that you can then get the main buildings in. So control zero to go back out. Q to turn off the quick mask. And I'm now going to put in a pixel layer. So I'm now going to add on this pixel layer here a gradient going here because I'm going to use this as a mask. So I'm going to go to the gradient tool here and draw from the middle here outwards and then change this this one here. I'm going to go to the darker end there make that black. So in other words it's not going to apply the mask so it's going to mask out the the gradient in that rectangle. So that's that one. And Control D to get rid of that. Now, see I've got the outline of the buildings there. Uh, if I've missed a bit here I can always kind of paint it in or just do an undo and do that again. So let's get the X black brush and paint that in. There you go, that's right. Now then, what I'm going to do is go to the selection brush here. To select here I've got to be on the background layer. And I'm going to sort of do the same down the other side. This is a trickier side because you've got all these poles. Again you could spend a lot of time doing stuff here and I'm just going to do it very very quickly just to show the principle. Okay, and I'm just sort of selecting the, the bit that's got a going away into the distance. And that'll do. So again, going to the pixel layer now. 
getting the gradient tool, drawing from the middle outwards, and then going up to edit it, and using this. The, the way editing of, of gradients has been changed a bit, so it depends on which version you're using as to what this will look like, but just use the way it works for your version. And there you go, I've done that there. Now then, here we go, let's just get rid of everything there. Control D to get rid of the marching ants. I want to fill in the rest here with white because I'm going to use this as a mask. So a way to do that is go to Edit and Matt. Matt fills in the transparent um, pixels, things that we haven't added anything in yet. So I go to Matt here and it starts off with white. Yeah, and that's white's what I want. I'll apply that. Now I want to turn this into a mask, so I right click and rasterize to mask. And then I drag the max mask up to, so I've got the vertical blue bar on the rectangle above. I need to turn this back on again. Bing. And there you go, you can see the effect that's happening here. It's got these buildings now and it's got them fading away and you can see the edges. Here you can see it's probably a little bit rough in places and a, a simple way to do that is to get a, a brush, probably a white one is better usually. So let's go here, make brush, get a white brush, make it fairly big, right square bracket, and make the hardness very soft and the opacity fairly low so that you can paint it in a bit of time. So, so you can see I'm over good doing this here. So I can just do the edges of things. So I can soften up things. Yeah, anything down here, that's not too bad. Just look around for where it looks a little bit rough and it you know, maybe leaves a little bit of an edge. Even just tinging the edge of things is, is okay. But overall, there's the effect. So let's see before and after. So before and after. And then also with the mask before. So that's just the white from the top down. But when I'm masking in there, now we can see the 3D effect we're getting. We can also see bits going, oh, I need to fix that one a little bit more there. There we go. So that's a way to do 3D fog using a into the distance type mask. Anyway, there we go, and thank you very much for watching.